everyone and welcome to our very special program today. We will be talking about the call to national prayer and fasting on Friday the 8th of April. As you already would know, His Excellency has called all religious bodies together to unite under the umbrella of One Guyana for a day of fasting and prayers on Friday. And you know that fasting and prayer is being called at this time because it's very significant. It's a very rare time when um, three significant religious observances are overlapping. We have our Muslims, um, bro Muslim brothers and sisters who are observing Ramadan. We have our Hindu brothers and sisters who are observing um, Nivatri and Christians observing Lent. And so with me this afternoon, I have three distinguished leaders um, in the religious community, and it's my honor to introduce them to you today. With me, I'll start from my far right. We have Director of the Education Department of the Central Islamic Organization of Guyana, CIOG, Sheikh Muin Ulhaq, and we have Dr. Vindya Pasad, Minister of Human Services and Social Security, and she's also the President of the Guyana Hindu Dharmic Sabha. We also have Bishop Patrick Finlay. He's a senior pastor of the Full Life New Testament Church of God. Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome, Minister, to our very special program. We are at a very special time in our country. We are poised for um, prosperity. We are poised to achieve many things that we had hoped and dreamed, for, dreamed of over the years. Um, and uh, you know, oil and gas, as you know, is here and, and Guyana and her people will benefit and we're going places, we're going to be transformed. We've heard the president talk uh, at length um, many times again. We've heard his vision of having a one Guyana, bringing everyone together. Um, it's not just, uh, we, we're talking about religious bodies, we're talking about coming together for economic prosperity. We're talking about coming together as communities, raising our children. Um, and uh, it's it's now at a, a, a place where he has called all of us to not just believe in it, not just talk about it, but for us to bring it to the higher, the higher being, our, our, um, our God, and to, to pray and to fast um, before our God. So welcome to the program again. And in this, this, this movement with this trajectory we're on, how important is a national day of prayer and fasting to our nation um, in your specific um, roles as leaders in your in your your mosques and temples and, and, and churches and so on. How is it important to our nation at this time? I'd like to begin with um, with Mr. Hack. Sorry, if you go ahead and just, just tell us at this time, how is it important to us? Well, thank you very much for having us here this afternoon, Honorable Minister, and my co fellow colleagues, Pastor Finley. Um, I begin by the outset by commending the init this initiative um, of His Excellency Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali and his government, uh, the prayer, the fasting, this National Day on Friday the 8th of April at the Arthur Chung Center, where we all will assemble. And further commend him and his government on the One Guyana uh, initiative on this project. And obvious, oh, for, for sure, um, this activity on Friday is consistent with this One Guyana project. Um, we uh, from the Islamic community and CIOG commend this initiative, these efforts, and commend the government for its inclusivity and that is the means through which we will achieve this one Guyana. We, the religious community, the Islamic community, the Hindu community, the Christian, we are only happy to participate in, the, in, in such activities because we consider it religious. One human being, one race, one God we are worshiping. So this concept of uh, oneness is very profound in, in the religion um, of Islam. 
the famous statement by one of our Khalifs, Muslim leaders of the past. He said, we are either brothers and sisters in faith or we are brothers and sisters in humanity. Mm -hmm. And so if we are not related to each other by true our faith, then definitely we are related because of our common parentage, the same red blood colors which runs in all of our veins. Mm -hmm. And when we look at this, um, this, this concept we, in Islam, from the Islamic perspective, what we find also, everything which will lead towards the upliftment of humanity and the unification of the human race it is not only religious but obligatory and so unity of mankind and promoting unity is considered obligatory beginning with your family members and then the wider society to do the opposite is considered a great sin that is to sever the ties of kinship or to promote disunity, disunity among mankind and brings is, is considered a great sin and Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him in this regard said that, that well not the exact quote statement but the meaning of which that your worth lies in your giving back to humanity and helping humanity it does not lie in what you have but it is what you give mm -hmm. and therefore he said the best human being is the one who is most beneficial to mankind but narrowing back because we get some myself and sometimes all three of us here will get carried away <laughs> I don't want to deliver a lecture here tonight <laughs> or a preaching session but not to narrow down on this activity of Friday one fasting and prayer um, as you are aware we the Muslims are fasting like our Hindu and Christian brothers and sisters the fast of Ramadan and one of the objectives of the fast it is to get closer to the Creator as well as the creation and so experiencing the pangs of hunger and thirst and other sacrifice and other experiences among others it should help to foster a better relationship with each other and bridge the gap um, between the, the haves and the have-nots in, in, in our society. And so we are very happy to participate while it is considered a national activity. In, in our opinion, it is a religious activity and therefore we as religious leaders we are only happy to once again have the endorsement of our government the people of our country to showcase not only our faith but to showcase the similarities between the three major faiths of our, our country i've always said time and again we have more in common than our our few differences and so this activity is very significant and at this time when we are observing our fast yes and uh, it will definitely uh, enhance uh, our relationship with each other and bring us closer to achieving this uh, one Guyana Thank you, thank you, Mr. Hart. Um, um, Minister, uh, Pastor Finley will come to you in a second. Uh, from, from your perspective as a leader in the Hindu community, um, how do you see this time um, for us? Why, why now? I think this is a very significant time, and it is always a wonderful thing when the major faiths can have that connection through prayer. And the periods of Navratri, Ramadan and Lent lend to that environment being a very prayerful one. So linking us together, uniting us together under the umbrella of prayer is a good concept where we can come together and really petition that one supreme being, mm -hmm. God, 
however we choose to worship God and to acknowledge that prayer is always powerful. Prayer can change not only the environment, but prayer can also help people to surmount their challenges in life. And when we consider the significance of prayer, prayer is a very personal thing for people. Recognizing that everyone is bound by prayer is a good way of uniting the thoughts, the hearts, and the minds of people on one day. And it's acknowledging already that in all of the three faiths that we are praying, we are keeping a disciplined fast, and we are also going to Masjid, Mandir, and church. So I feel it is significant that way. There is a wonderful Hindu belief called Vasudeva Kutumbakam, the world is one family. And if we can shrink the world into a country and we can celebrate the unity that exists among our people, I think we are also celebrating the mutual respect that I'm always fond of elevating beyond the national level when I speak of my country, because we are among the rare in the world where everyone is not only respectful of each other's faith and how we observe each other's religious performances or observances, but more importantly, there is that level of belonging to this wider construct of Guyana that would respect, recognize, and acknowledge the togetherness that exists. So I think as a people, when we want to see the coming together of the people, faith, prayer, those are wonderful ways of doing it. And when we choose as a people to engage in many things, we must never forget the spiritual or the religious aspect of things. So as, as leaders, as people, we must always, while we try to do different things in life, not lose that spiritual connect that we have with the divine, the supreme. And so I, I think that praying at this point in time will only augur well for a country because why do we pray for blessings, mm -hmm. for intervention, for clarity of thought, for rational thinking, and for meaningful, purposeful actions on our own part. It mm -hmm. also helps us to become more balanced, more centered, and more rational, reasonable, mature in our thinking. So prayer is something that grounds an individual. So however people choose to pray, I think they're seeking some of the same things, mm -hmm. including happiness. And when we have a happy country, a prosperous country, the people can only benefit from that. So I would like to say that unity under the umbrella of prayer is a powerful thing. Thank you, Minister. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Fast Finley. <clears throat> well, let me begin um, by saying how, how grand this whole idea of calling a day of prayer and fasting is. I remember in 205 when we had the floods, I always thought, well, we should have a day of prayer and fasting. It didn't happen. We moved on to the pandemic. I thought about the day of prayer and fasting. It didn't happen. And then I thought about the floods of last year. I thought, well, you know, um, we should have a day of fasting and prayer. It didn't happen. But when I got a call and I was made aware of this initiative of the president asking that we gather together and fast, afflict our bodies, fast, go without food and water, for the common goal of unifying this nation. I mean, I have heard of all the great things that has happened in, in Guyana, all the discoveries of oil and all the things that's happening. But when I heard that His Excellency is calling for the Guyanese populace, the Guyanese society, to fast and pray, I believe that's the greatest thing I've heard in a long time. And um, I, I really want to encourage us to, to really go to God. Because the reason why we are fasting, we need, and, and Minister Vindy said it just now, we need directions. We are poised to prosper. And if we are not careful, we can, we can get thrown off of balance. And so when His Excellency is saying, listen, 
We are not in a crisis, mind you, but we need to go to God and we need to ask for directions of where to go. We need to unify this nation. And, and since his ascension into office, the one thing that has been recurring over and over and over again is please let us unite as a people. And so this day uh, set for Friday uh, for the day of fasting and prayer is 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 very phenomenal. It's it's, it's historic, and I, I want to I want to ask one and all who are hearing us this evening to make that effort. You might not be able to gather with those of us who are going to be there at the convention center from three thirty to whenever. But if you can take that time off to, to, to fast, to skip a meal, we will say, to fast, to go to God and say, listen, we don't know what tomorrow holds, and none of us here knows that. And His Excellency don't even know that. But if we can go to God and say, listen, Eternal Father, Creator, we don't know what happens next, but we're, or, or we're asking you for guidance. We're asking you for directions. And when, I don't know if I'll get into trouble for this, but when I heard the inspiration that His Excellency got at 4 o'clock one morning, Monday morning I think it was, when this whole idea of, of calling this fasting and prayer, you know, it, it had to be, it has to be God. It has to be the Creator impressing upon Him as the leader in this nation to let's do this together. And I applaud him, his bravery, you know, he's coming for a lot of flax and whatever, but I believe we're on the right trajectory. And as we continue, as, as the three religious uh, factions that are here this evening, this the, right now, we can make this happen. Guyana is poised to prosper, and we need God's intervention and his direction. And I want to really, really thank uh, His Excellency and the government. You know, I've seen... Uh, everybody come aboard to make this happen and I believe it's going to be a resounding success not only not only physically but in the in the realms of 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 the creator it's going to make a lot of inroads yes and you know I have a soft place in my heart for young people maybe because I'm young myself oh go ahead maybe um, but I, I I took some time to to um, browse social media and because I really want to get a sense of what what are they thinking? What are the young people saying? What are they thinking? Mm -hmm. um, what would you say to our young people? I know we need we need our our more matured people as well. But I feel a special there's there's something with our young people. They they're growing growing up in a different time where they have to bear a lot of the burdens of the past. Um, how how can we? encourage them to come out um, to, to join the prayer and fast we know and each of you have alluded to it fasting and prayer it humbles us it takes sacrifice if you can if you can manage you the, the, the hunger pangs and and um, going without water as our Muslim brothers and sisters do a complete fast it teaches you self-control how do we um, get our young people to participate um, is there uh, something you'd like to say to maybe their specific youth to leaders within your organizations, um, denominations? I can encourage them to come out and see the benefit of something like this. This is no longer talking. This is no longer putting on Facebook what you want to see happen in the country. But this is an opportunity for you to literally participate in something greater than ourselves coming together. How, what would you say to them to, to, to bring them in? I... I I, I know I'll save Minister for last because um, I've listened to you time and time again and I, 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 I know you have, um, I, I know, I think I know what you will say, <laughs> right? But I want to give, um, I want to give um, Mr. Hack and Mr. Finley a, a chance to go ahead and, and just speak to our young people because I think, you know, like I said, I think they're, they're taking a lot of the burden of what happened in the past and they're not getting a chance to experience what is now and and the things that will come um mr hack please go that pass to go okay <laughs> Each, have listen we're all. we're you have to respect elders <laughs> we're on the brink of a breakthrough in this nation and <clears throat> from our holy books we have seen the 
effects of fasting all through the scriptures we've seen what happens when when people fast we can go from Moses coming down all through the Old Testament come through New Testament um, we've seen the effects the positive effects the breakthrough we will say in Christian vernacular the, 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 the deliverances, the, the breaking down of walls, the so many things that has happened when people fast. We are urged to fast when, you know, when things happen and you don't see a clear way to go and, and you don't know what fasting is it. So what I will say to young people at this time, there are many, there are many ways to go right now. I mean, as you look at the, at what's happening in the world today, you can go here, there or anywhere. But what you need to do is to get directions and fasting brings that direction. Fasting brings alignment. Fasting when you afflict your soul and you do it without the food and the water, it means a lot to God. It means that you are serious about where you want to go. You're serious about what you want to do. And as a result of, of you fasting uh, in, the, in the Bible, um, there is there used to be what is called the day of atonement when people would afflict their souls and fast and whatever whatever so to the young people to the um, that are trending all of these things that's happening I want to encourage you listen come on out don't worry with what's happening in what happened in the past this is a new era this is a new time experience the difference for yourself come out there and 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 fast and and see God, and see this. You know, if we can sit here and we can lament about a lot of things, and we can, for lack of a better word, we can bubble about a lot of things, how it should be, and what should not be, and and whatever. But my understanding and and my personal conviction is, God is in control. I believe from the depths of my heart that God is in control of everything there's nothing happens without God knowing so he knows what's going on and therefore if we're going to go through or if we're going to uh, be able to make it to the end we need to have God we need to do that kind of you know connection with God and this is why this fasting and, and prayer day that has been set aside is so important and so back to the question what would you say to young people give it a try you're not gonna die she has been doing this this the ramadan from since he was a kid i've been fasting vindi has been fasting we don't i mean the, the truth of the matter we look better you know fasting <laughs> but um it's it's a good thing it means that you're saying to the creator you're saying to god listen i need your intervention and i'm serious about it thank I'm you serious about thank it. you pastor Leo. she yeah, I endorse the statements of my fellow colleagues, Pastor and Dr. Vindi. Morality is the is the essence of these prayers, the fasting, and our charity, and all our good deeds. And morality is the border between animal life and human life. We are humans not because of this physical body only, but there's a soul. And the body obviously is being nourished by food and drink. And the soul is being nourished through our prayers, remembrance of the Lord, and our good deeds. And so this auspicious time for the three major faiths, um, it is a reset button or a pause button in our lives where we will turn towards paying some more attention to the soul uh, and that is I think how they use that in the IT language that is the Contract. where everything happens <laughs> and uh, it gives us an opportunity to pay more attention to the nourishment of the soul than the body so it's depriving the body for the upliftment of the soul mm -hmm. in Islam in the Holy Quran there is a principle uh, which states that there is uh, no compulsion in religion. And so we all have, human has been blessed with that freedom of choice. However, that is, that is not absolute. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
the simple definition of a sin is the misuse of one's choice. And so if we can nourish the soul with prayers and fasting and other good deeds, hopefully it will guide us and our young folks, as my fellow colleague said, to make the correct choices and, and decisions um, in life. Um, so my comment, my, my advice to, to my young brothers and sisters, Muslims, Christians, or Hindus, the Almighty and prayers is not a, a spare wheel which you pull out in mm -hmm. when you have problems. You know, it's always when we are in a crisis, then we're calling on the three major faiths. Well, this is a good change, a welcome change. Yes, indeed. You know, we, we are celebrating now, and we call, it, we call the, the major faiths, yes, we need to remember the Lord. Yeah in our good times so that he will remember us in yes. our difficult mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. Preach, brother, preach. Yes. So, <laughs> to our young folks, it's not about when you have a disaster, an accident, or a sickness, and then you're shouting for the Lord, you know. Uh, we see the prayers as a, as a steering wheel, which should help us and direct us in our, put us in the right direction our, in, in our lives, and so that we can make decisions that will benefit us not only here, mm -hmm. but we all believe in, 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 in the hereafter. This is my, well, my humble reminder first, and then to my young folks out there, make the best way to make that correct decision and choice. Uh, it is following the guidance of the Almighty. Uh, you know, I recall as I conclude, uh, there's a verse in the Holy Quran, and I've used this verse especially when persons are madly in love, and you know, they, can, they kind of clouds their rationality mm -hmm. and their judgment. There's a verse in the Quran that states, you may like something, but it is not good for you. And you may dislike something, but it is good for you. Mm -hmm. You do not know. Mm -hmm. God Almighty knows. Indeed. So we need to put our trust and our fears in His hands. And prayers, fasting helps us in this regard. Thank you. Thank you. Indeed, it's, it really um, humbles us. You know. yep. Minister, please. Well, I think prayer has been an ancient mechanism used by people across the world. And it has remained that where you connect very deeply, very personally, with God. And fasting I have seen, I've been traveling across the country for Navratri and there are so many young people fasting for Navratri. Mm -hmm. And when they fast, their understanding is that this is a discipline. So as they continue to fast during this period, it is an acknowledgement too of those who are mm -hmm. fasting. And those who are not fasting, it is for you to develop a discipline. And being disciplined is sometimes a very tough thing for anyone. Yeah. So when you are able to have fasting, whether you choose to do so for a day, 10 days, mm -hmm. however long you want to do it, it is conditioning your body, it is preparing your body, and then mentally conditioning you to be receptive to the teachings so that you develop a higher state of consciousness. And I think that higher state of consciousness or that higher consciousness is what we want everyone, including young people, to mm -hmm. have, which means not only seeing what matters to you, but seeing what is good for beyond you mm -hmm. and how you can utilize what you benefit from through prayer, through fasting internally and express it to others out there mm. because sometimes in the fast-paced world in which we live people get very caught up and emotionally they become very confused or sometimes they get angry and sometimes there is violence but I think when people can pause and they can engage in prayer it calms them down mm -hmm. and it brings that sense of confidence within and in Hinduism we believe that we are spark of the divine and so when we pray and when we fast it is a recognition of that divinity 
that exists within us. So a young person understanding that they're deeply connected from the time of their birth mm -hmm. all through their life to God gets these times of fasting. And it allows that person to say, hey, if I'm a spark of divinity, then my conduct, my attributes, should my characteristics mm -hmm. should represent mm -hmm. divinity. Mm -hmm. So whether you speak, whether you act, or whether you think, it should be at that level of higher consciousness that you're not only thinking of what you can benefit from, but how you can contribute mm -hmm. positively back to society. And I want to say for me, fasting has been lifelong in terms of how people fast, because I'm a lifelong vegetarian, and so people fast differently. Some people will not have anything, like our Muslim brothers and sisters, and also those in the Hindu community, and some people from the Christian community will choose to do that. Some will choose to fast with fruit. Some will choose to fast in different ways. But however you can discipline yourself, that discipline will never leave you. It will only build you stronger mm -hmm. internally. And it gets better over time as well. Definitely. So, yes. Don't feel defeated if you started. No. If you're fasting <laughs> with us on on Friday, don't feel defeated if you you know. But just keep going. That's mm -hmm. right. Just keep going. I think the point is that it, it humbles us. It brings us together. And a lot of the change that we want to see, not just in the world, but in our home in Guyana and her people, um, starts with us. Mm -hmm. And if we can reflect on our own behavior, on our own attitudes and beliefs, I think we are in a better place to handle what's coming yeah. um, for, for Guyana. Thank you so much for um, giving us your time today. Thank and um, I look forward to Friday. So on Friday, um, if you're watching us, if you're listening to us, whether um, on TV or social media, um, you're welcome to join us on Friday. We start at 3.30 p.m. and we will go up to, um, up to 7. We will have, um, of course, an opportunity and spaces for you to come and pray um, and to just fellowship. We will have um, songs and prayers and time, a time of reflection as well. And we're meeting under the, under the theme, fast together, pray together, and stay together as one Guyana. So I look forward to seeing you there um, on Friday. God bless you That's all. The Arthur Convention Center, right? At the Arthur Chung, Chung Conven Conven Conference Center. Conference. Arthur Chung Conference Center. Yes, thank you for that. So see you at the Arthur Chung Conference Center on Friday at 3.30 p.m. Um, God bless you. Thank Goodbye. you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>